Hi and welcome to this review of the M2A2 IFE in Ukraine markings from Magic Factory. Okay, very briefly, this kit is not to be confused with the release of the M2A4 kit. This is not simply the same boxing as the other release, which I'm going to show you now, which already you can see many reviews on YouTube. This is a different version with less parts, but is more expensive. So let's explain why. First of all, uh, on the box, there's quite a lot of information on this. I'm going to write some of this down for you in the description of the vehicle but we're looking at uh, m2a2 bradley operation desert shield situational awareness ukraine ukraine markings are only included within the kit which i think is a missed opportunity and i'll explain why why is the kit more expensive it contains a lot less it contains less parts and less options well the 3D parts that are included make this a M2A2 ODS, yeah? So where does this Bradley fit in? I think they've included here 2007. This sort of Bradley is in the time scale 2008 right up to the present day, up to 2024. The Bradley has a long lineage. I mean, we're talking about 30, 40 years, really, basically include development period, but M2A2, ODS, so these ones 2008 are still in the in still in service with US Army and Why haven't they included the markings for US Army? Anyways, let's open up the box and see what's inside. That's more important Okay, so let's have a look. Okay one bag here instructions two three four a box of, P of uh, 3D parts. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven bags of sprues. Let's open them up and have a look at the parts in detail. We'll start off with the instruction manual. I better just caveat, caveat myself. I'm not a Bradley expert by any means, but I do like these vehicles. I think they look excellent. I think they make excellent subjects. However, they don't appear to be that popular with the modern world. This M2A2 is the probably the closest model that's been out previously is the uh, Tamiya kit of the ODS kit, which had some inaccuracies. And then the recent kits by Meng, etc., and also Kinetic Reboxings have been M2A3, M2A4. The biggest difference between those marks is that the M2A2 has has not got the commander's independent thermal viewer, which is a large device that sits on the turret. That is a very distinguishing feature. I think they could have marketed this as two in one because, as you can see, you have got the options for the ERA, the uh, Bradley Urban Survival Kit, which is the ERA block armor that is provided within this kit, which is excellent. First of all, you've got the part mapping sort of diagram showing all the sprues. As I mentioned, less sprues than the other kit, the M2A4 uh, kit, but also these 3D printed parts. So is it worth it? Well, let's talk about that. Instructions are, you know, pretty well laid out. Let's have a look and see what, what's missing. Is there any uh, paint call outs? First of all, this is obviously the first time I've looked inside here and I'm trying to see if there's any call outs at all. And we just have references to the parts themselves. Points to note as well, there's no interior provided for the kit. However, the insides of the hatches, etc., are detailed. Um, it is probably possible that you can get the main interior for the Bradley and combine it with this kit to make a full interior vehicle. 
However, this release does not come with one. If we see further uh, releases, this Bradley, who knows? Who knows? Anyways, um, you know, pretty standard construction. Yeah, you're building up the lower running gear. By this stage, already by step three, you've got the thing together. Yeah, you're basically joining um, both holes together. And that's the way this should be done. So many typically instructions, they show you adding on the details afterwards. It's better off to get that construction uh, firm and uh, complete before adding on details. There is call outs as well, showing you where to add holes, etc. And uh, other sort of details. And it also will cover the options between the two versions, the boss kit. From the indications I've seen, the uh, Bradleys that were supplied to Ukraine, you'll see them with that error armor, without it, and also a combination of only frontal error. Have a look at your references. Here are the tracks. I think this is great. We've got the link and length style tracks. I, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is the first time we see T161 tracks, uh, which again puts it in that 2008 time frame, a modernized um, ODS Bradley. Also to note as well, the fenders are the rounded type towards the front. And this is what was missing from the Tamiya Bradley, which is the uh, driver's vision enhancement for uh, night vision, basically, which is a camera sort of device that fits on the front hole. The Tammy kit did not include that. Here we see the options as well for building up the brat or the error armor. This is important here. These P details we'll have a look at the parts are used to basically add all the storage onto externally tie on storage onto the outer part of the side armor and it tells you I think in terms of location it just says basically put them wherever you want however the indications and the instructions only sort of show you fixing it to the side armor Check your references because you will find that these um, these are typically also fitted onto the front plate, as I can show you in this photograph here. Just want to flip back as well. They indicate drilling out as well on the non-error block side armor, and those holes are for CIP combat identification panel. You can just see it here, I, I suppose I should zoom you in, but it does indicate here attaching a combat identification panel, which from all references I've seen were not used on any of the vehicles whatsoever used by um, Ukraine armed forces. They are not using these combat identification panels just want to point out one thing I missed out. This is a really quite nice feature in the instructions uh, that allows you to place uh, one, the very rear part of the side armor at the bottom. You can, pre you can place it in the folded up position, which is uh, you know commonly seen on these vehicles. In fact, all of these plates can be turned upwards and that is commonly done to uh, not allow mod etc to build up uh, where that um, track and idler is positioned. Okay, by step uh, 24, we're building up the turret multifaceted components. The instructions are clear, but just to point out, there's no paint instructions whatsoever. Except, ah, there is uh, there's a little bit here there's a call out here for some mr hobby just on there but what i've seen there's a lot also anyways there's no interior so there's we're only dealing with the exterior of the vehicle so maybe that's uh, not a deficit in this case <clears throat> 
here again as well uh, we've got the the error version has got this um, commander's protection with the armored glass and actually you'll see that there's non error versions that have got this um, protection so you can mix and match between the two depending on your reference which of course is excellent as well big difference here again as well the turret also is in these standard ver they call it standard version brat version or you can call it error version and non error version the sighting unit for the gunner also allows you to pose well they call it the doghouse don't they the doors open the armored shutters are allowed to be posed in an open or closed position and uh, here we are this is fitting the 3d printed basket this makes it this basket is different to those on the m2a3 m2a4 so this allows the kit to be accurate they definitely have done their research in this um, vehicle you get the um, tow anti-tank missile you actually get the tubes here if you want to paint them even though you won't see them and also you are given the option to pose the tow in the ready to fire position actually it only indicates in the ready to fire position which um, is not how the vehicle is typically seen that unit is stowed it will be um, actually configured downwards as there in the painting this is a painting instructions but I'll just show you the color profiles pretty straightforward no color call outs unless I'm mistaken no not inside these instructions anyways here are the color profiles as I mentioned I think they've done a good job here obviously you need these color profiles to depict this digital camo as used by uh, UAF but um, that's difficult <laughs> let's not make bones about that that's a difficult um, pattern to do also if you have a look as well these things got extreme you know in combat these things get extremely muddy and also there's variations but um, you can understand why they've done this I mean it is obviously a current conflict it could make the model um, more uh, marketable and people are interested obviously in this but I personally I'm a bit disappointed I would have liked to have seen some US Army versions uh, within this this kit but we've only got Ukraine um, armed forces uh, in two schemes showing and here is the actual paint guide here so this is what's called out they've included references of course of this is important the actual name of the color so if you haven't got AK paints if you haven't got Mr. Color if you haven't got Tamiya which you should get anywhere in the world you have got the names of the colors here so okay that's pretty good let's have a look at the uh, water stickers now okay here is the markings which include technical inscriptions in English language they actually you can actually feel that they have got a thickness to them but the the colors are really good obviously depicting the Ukraine flag as well and these um, typical uh, cross type markings that um, UAF are using in current conflict in Ukraine so obviously we haven't used these before but I'll say it again why haven't we got US Army markings this would be really popular uh, for obviously a lot of models that wanted to pick US Army vehicles okay I'll just use my usual format of giving an overall view of a sprue this is basically a sprue containing the era armor and then also I'll move you into macro to show you how good or otherwise the detail is okay nice and close in now uh, of note is the texture on here is fantastic it is really really good it's got the non-slip depiction on the error as well and also on 
some of these hatches as well here. They've done a pretty good job with this, to be honest. The side error arm as well, all those bolts and stuff, really um, well done. Um, also, fortunately, in one big piece. This grill as well, you can see it is totally hollow, which is fantastic. Great detail. Here's the hatch here. Again, it's got some texture on it as well, as would be on the real vehicle. And uh, this is fantastic. They've actually included the error mounting portion. So you could, in theory, show, well, only the front mount error. You could show it without with the support structure without the blocks if you really wanted to. Here again, anti-slip texture on the hatches here. Looks really good, really promising. Have to say, you know, nowadays we've got really good injection molding. There's no flash. Everything looks really crisp and tight. Good impression so far. Two sprues thus marks Hotel H, which of course is running gear and tracks. As I said, this later version of wide track that is commonly seen on these Bradleys now which is great to see. I don't I don't think we've had these tracks included in a kit before, so it's really good to see these uh, provided in this version. Also to note as well, the idler is of a updated type as well. And let's move in so I can show you the detail of the tracks. Okay, so we're looking at the inner face of these double pin tracks uh, which are they've got okay knockout marks you've got a few are they really noticeable are they going to be detrimental not for me I, I can live with that I think I'll be fine with that the main thing is that it's going to be you know pretty easy to assemble these yeah um, okay the actual guide horns are hollowed out on the real tracks but molding limitations I can live with that as well. I don't see anything, you know, too detrimental. You know, 99.9% .9 of models I think would agree with me. Also to note, we've got these individual tracks here as well. They also have this uh, mark here as well. Let's show you the other face. Obviously these tracks were introduced because uh, they've got the big rubber pads on which gives them a longevity of service um, when they're you know tracking down roads etc and i'll just show you this again these are going to paint up wonderfully show you some detail on this drive sprocket here looks really tight really crisp note this this is obviously part of the road wheel. look at how uh in scale the thickness is or how finely molded They've, uh, they've got these parts. And as I mentioned, uh, combat identification panels. Obviously, it's an error that they show them uh, being added on to this model, if it's going to be Ukraine Army. But fantastic that they included them for those of us that want to build them as a US Army version. Just want to show you these. These are the ammo boxes. There's a quite a bit of slide molding as well in this kit. So I'll point it out where we can see it. These parts are really finely detailed and obviously shows that they've gone to some expense in providing these details. But let's talk about that a little bit later on as well. Okay, Sprue November with the non-error or standard armor and other component parts as well. Part of the turret ring here, etc. Let's just move you in straight away, show you the texture, show you the details. Okay, again, we've got this uh, really nicely done texture, anti-slip type surface applied onto the top mounts. Here is the part of the uh, hatch, driver's hatch, here again with the same sort of texture. And of course, let's have a look at these side skirts with all this wonderful bolt detail. Here's the fenders, the later rounded style fenders or front fenders. Just flick these over. I just want to see if they've got the drill hole location points. And yes, they do. So you know where to drill holes. This is a smaller sprue, sprue eight. I'll just show you the whole thing in macro. 
we're looking at the rear entry hatch for the crew compartment here and again I'm going to mention it many many times they've obviously you know studied a Bradley it's been properly mapped out where you've got the textures and hopefully I mean I'm thinking the thing's accurate it looks good and again here we've got this slide molded part for the driver's optics for that device the night vision device for the for the driver so again excellent excellent details I don't, I don't know exactly which part this is but it's caught my eye in terms of its finesse the pad eyes lifting eyes all look really good really sharp detail bolt detail on which looks like the uh, transmission surround is again excellently captured sprue j a smaller sprue i'll just show you again in macro lots and lots of details uh fantastic for me i don't know about you guys but i like all these individual details being rendered as separate parts as they add up and are added to the model the detail level just it looks so so good um the tammy kit a lot less parts but this obviously includes a lot more detail here we can see some of this digital battlefield stuff which comes from this uh, designation situational awareness it's like gps tracking stuff or bluetooth tracking stuff here which is atypical now of um, these uh, these bradleys uh, again check your references i'm pretty sure that the uh, uaf kept these devices on but check all your references if you want to do uaf but as far as I know, there's no peculiar modifications for these Ukraine army versions. Very small sprue, sprue L, which is the ER, ERA armor for the turret. Again, I'm just going to repeat myself time and again. Texture, bolts, everything looks great. Two off sprues, sprue D. Again, I'm just going to show you in macro again. Very small sprue. But of course, we have got the running gear, the suspension components, the stub axle arms, etc., the toe eyes, uh, lots of small details, the lights, etc. And again, I think these are spare track links. Uh, should have checked that in the instructions. These are really well done. These are the foot loops. Um, that are mount that you see on the bottom of the armor plating on the side armor plating and also these appear to be the smoke grenade discharges it's got two sprues and again some really small details here as well looks really really good sprue O contains yet more details and small details with that as well so these are really fine they're really crisp and should give you an appreciation of you know what sort of work's going to be involved in building this model as i'm trying to point out to you there is a lot of small detailed parts uh, they've obviously you know used a lot of references to put this together here's the pioneer tools these look uh, really good they've got the um, mounting or securing fittings as well molded integrally and another pioneer tool there there's a little sink mark there on that uh, big hammer but honestly nothing to worry about there's your track bar there again all of this detail is the uh, pickaxe head there tow hook this is obviously the recovery cable that get mounted to the rear infantry compartment entry and exit door and these are fittings i think these are storage that go on the rear uh the rear bulkhead as well and these have been slide molded uh basically not in terms of adding detail but just to make them out of one single part which uh, can't argue about that okay here's big sprue eye so i'm just going to show you overall obviously we're looking at the turret itself the turret ring and also the non 3d printed bustle rack for the turret and the tow launcher the tubes hatches etc okay we'll start on the turret itself this is smoothly um, 
molded, which is correct, because it's just aluminium plates. These things are not cast. Don't make the mistake of uh, covering them with Mr. Servicer and make it look like crap. Anyways, there's a load of external armor that gets mounted on here in all these little plate sections anyways. Uh, this is really well done as well. You've got the openings is the way they there for the optics. So the optics, which are clear parts, slip in underneath. And here's, like I mentioned, here are the sort of plates that will go on and get added on to the external face of the turret. And I need to point this out as well. This, this turret basket is excellent. So just bear that in mind. This is the plastic version which is not applicable to this M2A A2 ODS, but um, it looks great. It is slide molded again. Uh, details are fantastic. And just show you these hatches here as well. These are really well done. And again, more slide molding here on which I believe is the site, yes. Sprue K is very small. It contains the turret trunnion. Some of the, I believe this, this looks like the uh, protection. And also we have the 7.62 coaxial machine gun and the Bushmaster. Look at the Bushmaster. Do you need an aftermarket market barrel? Of course not, look. They've actually got a perforated um, muzzle brake and hollowed out. There's no need to replace this with anything. It's got the nice fluting as well. Uh, check again, check, check your references. I believe that there's uh, two different barrel types or maybe even more for the Bushmaster. But what a superb part, I mean, um, you do not need aftermarket and uh, even as a bonus the 7.62 machine gun has actually got a is hollow well it's got a indentation it's got a depiction of a hollowed out barrel which is absolutely amazing these parts are on sprue e and they are a flexible vinyl material that probably need to be secured with super glue uh, be careful with your liquid cements they could deteriorate these these uh, these parts uh, what they depict are actually these are, these are storage compartment on the side of the vehicle I'll bring out up a photograph now the idea was to um, slip equipment behind them so they wouldn't get knocked off it would help um, uh, the storage um, be more secure to the vehicle I suppose only the um, the Bradley operators would know if that works or not and here we have a small piece of flexible material. Sorry, I've lost focus there, uh, which is part of, I believe it covers the top of the mantlet and also the flexible link there for the machine gun. I don't know if that part's internal or not. I need to check. I've never seen that on the outside of the vehicle, but um, at least it's included. Here are the transparent parts, mainly periscopes and optics. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got all the, um, the sighting devices are provided as transparent parts and also, of course, as are provided within the kit is the commander's protection glass and also all the vehicle lighting as well is included as clear parts. This little part here is the um, standby site for the main armament. These are the hero parts as I like to call them. Of course the larger slide mouldings which are of course the lower hull and upper hull. Okay we'll start off with the um, lower hull here with all these uh, mountings as well. These are all been well cast. You can tell it's been slide moulded because they've captured all the facets. These are supports of course for the return rollers here. There's no texture on this which is accurate again as the vehicle is made out of aluminum or aluminium depending where you're from. Interesting. Inside here is a stamp. Um, is, that, is that a year stamp? 2004? Is this a 
Is this from another kit? I have no idea, but it's got a, a stamp. 2004, which I think can only be a the year 2004. Mystery. And this part as well, the upper has the similar stamping as well. Maybe just coincidental, who knows. But of course on here again, we've got this great detail on here, which is the air intake type louver or the coolant louver. The, um, this is either a coolant or the fuel, I think it's a fuel filler cap actually, um, which is integrally molded, but looks superb. Everything looks great. By placing them side by side, you get an immediate appreciation of the, you know, fairly modest size of the Bradley. Okay, here are the photo etch parts. We've got two frets of, uh, of note. These are already removed. They haven't got any attachment points to the outer fret. These are already been separated. So all you need to do is peel back the film and take them off. These all need to be bent to shape. Remember what I said as well about them being placed on different areas, not just those indicated within the instructions, in particular the front plate. These parts, of course, have got small attachment points here. It doesn't really matter, does it? But um, this here is actually a, uh, this is a paint mask, yeah, for your road wheels um, in order to uh, paint the middle portion, the camouflage color, while you've previously painted the rubber portion a rubber color. This, of course, uh, really looks great. You have to bet some of this is protection for the optics. And of course, we've got the grills there. Okay, so here's our cute little box of 3D printed parts. The main part, of course, is the uh, different sized bustle rack. Now, this is why this kit's more expensive than the other kit, because they've had to 3D print these parts. There's a few armor plates, I'll open this up. But we've seen that the plastic parts are excellent for the um, later M2A4 bustle rack. Uh, they could have easily provided a separate sprue for these parts in plastic. The detail would have been amazing, and the cost I'm guessing would be less. However, we have got these 3D printed parts and we will use them in this build. So that concludes our look at this uh, new kit from Magic Factory. I'm looking very much forward to building it. If you want to know more, join us on Patreon where we will cover the build. See you guys real soon. Thanks for your support.